This is the human heart. Central to our physical body, our survival, revered by poets throughout history as the emotional center of our being. The place we instinctively touch when asked to point to ourselves. And now, what we have known intuitively is being understood scientifically. Researchers are unlocking a new science of the heart that could change everything we know about health and our interconnected nature. Coherence is a state of balance between heart, mind, and emotions, creating a favorable cascade of neural, hormonal, and biochemical events that benefit the entire body. But this phenomenon not only benefits us personally, it affects everything around us, emitting an electromagnetic field that can be measured up to three feet outside of the body. When you are in coherence, your heart resonates at the same frequency as the Earth's magnetic field. This frequency positively affects everything around you. When a group of people are in coherence together, this effect is magnified. Could community synchronized in coherence lower violence, accelerate cooperation, and global harmony? This is the purpose of the Global Coherence Pulse. If we can measure the impact of thousands of people in coherence at the same time, it could lead to a breakthrough in understanding the full potential of the human heart. All you need to participate is your presence and your heart. To take it to the next level, join the research study by downloading the app and getting an HRV monitor to measure your personal coherence. The world needs it more than ever before. Each human heart is unique and magnificent by itself. But imagine what could be possible when we unify. Welcome everyone. Welcome to the Global Coherence Pulse event today. My name is Teresa Collins and I'm one of the co-founders of the Global Coherence Pulse. And on behalf of the entire team, I just want to say thank you for spending an hour with us today to pulse the planet with our heart-centered coherence and love. We really need it more than ever before. And we host these events on the third Saturday of every month so that we have an opportunity to learn about the power of our individual and collective coherence and to pulse the planet with it. So really appreciate that you're here. I'm gonna ask Ian if he would bring up a poll because we would love to know who's here. And if you just take a minute to add your thoughts to this poll, Ian, if you could bring that up for us. Great, so as I'm sharing a little bit about today's polls, kind of fill in the poll for us and then we'll see, we'll see who's here. Uh, today's pulse is gonna be slightly different than our regular pulses. We go for an hour and 15 minutes. Our um, our special guest today is Greg Braden. We're also joined by Claudia Wells, who's also a co-founder of the Pulse alongside of me and uh, Roland McCready from HeartMath. And we are going to have, uh, Greg's gonna be sharing some information today that really helps us to understand the power and potency of what we're doing with the Global Coherence Pulses and our coherence practices on a daily basis. And then he'll take us into an experience of what he describes. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Look at the poll starting. I'm going to put my glasses on so I can see. So, so many people are here for the first time. Wow. Thank you so much. We're so happy to welcome you. We have about 60, 70% of people are here for the first time. About 28% uh, of people have been here 
um, many times. So we're happy to have you back. We have actually maxed out our Zoom line today. We have a thousand people on the line and we're broadcasting out to Unify's Facebook page, Awake TV, and also to our Global Coherence Pulse Facebook page. So thank you all for helping us get the message out. We're mostly on the Northern Hemisphere, it looks like right now, uh, some on the Southern Hemisphere. We're really happy, those of you, that it's uh, getting to be evening time. Uh, over there and age groups. We have some young people, uh, 18 to 30. Most of us are about 50 to 70, it looks like. Great. Ian, you can go ahead and end the poll. That just gives us a chance. We can see how many people are actually using the app right now. And if you'd like to join us in our citizen scientists initiative, uh, we really appreciate people going onto the Global Coherence app. That's from HeartMath. And you can look at that in the app store. It gives us a chance to see us on the map of where we are. And also, if you have a sensor, you can turn that on because it gives us a chance to uh, measure our coherence impact. And you'll see on a slide towards the end of the show today that we've reached uh, a, a milestone in how much coherence we post into the field. And that'll be fun to share those kind of results as more and more of us uh, jump in and participate. So I'm gonna turn it over to you, Claudia. I'm gonna go ahead and pin your uh, video, spotlight your video. Wonderful to see you today. Thank you so much for joining. And Claudia Wells is also, as I said, a co-founder of the Global Coherence Pulse and really brings the embodiment, uh, the science and the practice of coherence into everything she does in her work with IONS and with Global Coherence Initiative and really every place that she brings her love and presence. So Claudia, thank you so much for, for being such a pioneer in this field and being my partner here in the Global Coherence Pulse. Thank you, Teresa. It's such a privilege. And I'm going to qualify your introduction by saying I try to be that. <laughs> thank you for always giving me something to aspire to. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. It's a privilege to welcome you all, especially those of you here for the first time. And it's also a great privilege to welcome back our guide for today's Pulse, Greg Braden. Greg was with us last August and wow, a lot has happened in the world since then. I don't think it's just me that feels like there's more history happening in the early days of this new decade than in the entire previous decade combined. And a lot of it can be hard to watch. It really helps me to remember that crisis can be an evolutionary driver. It really helps me to notice that despite appearances or even more accurately, I think, inspired by them, there's a profound global movement happening beneath surface appearances to put human history on a new track. When characterized by not just the normal kind of love and compassion that keeps history repeating itself, but a new normal, a more unconditional love and compassion, a more resilient love and compassion that really acknowledge our essential oneness. And the pulse, where you are now is part of this global movement as a network of citizen scientists exploring our personal agency that we each have within the power of our own hearts and through the power of our collective heart energy to positively affect the global information field that we all share for the benefit of all life. In the process, we're also intending to help science tell a new story by co-creating pulses of heart coherent energy that are powerful enough that we might observe correlations between our collective amplified coherence and the various measurement instruments that have been developed to demonstrate a direct relationship between our inner world and our outer world. So like including the Global Coherence Initiative's magnetometers, can we find evidence of humanity's energetic coherence reflected in earth field fluctuations? Including the Global Consciousness Project and a global network of instruments that for decades have suggested that events that are high in collective love and compassion seem to correlate with more significant changes in the output of these physical devices than events that generate fear in humanity. 
in the near future, including social metrics, do we see cultural evidence of increased care, compassion, and resilience? And a developing network of tree sensors meant to give voice to nature by exploring if the electrical potentials of trees, who even knew they had electrical potential, <laughs> but to explore if those electrical potentials respond to mass coherence building events. Helping science tell a new story matters because the current scientific materialist paradigm that dominates the conversation tells us that we're fundamentally separate from each other and that only the physical manifest universe is real. The world we live in is a reflection of the stories we tell ourselves and science is one of the most influential storytellers of the modern world. Greg Braden is on the Global Coherence Initiative with me. And so I really recognize his years of dedicated effort to tell a new story. He's been pointing to the risks of a growing reliance on artificial intelligence and human technological augmentation that in many cases actually represent an argument for our limitations. Instead of recognizing and developing the fuller capacities that lie dormant within each one of us that are our birthright, like our coherence, and that if we were to turn our attention to them, if we were to turn our attention to what the emerging sciences like neurocardiology are pointing to, would tell a very different story of who we are, where we are, and what we're capable of while we're here. Stories that are much more aligned with the world's wisdom traditions and what they have to say about our fundamental oneness. As the chairman of the Institute of Noetic Sciences or IONS, I love sharing that our founder, Apollo 14 astronaut and sixth man to walk on the moon, Captain Ed Mitchell, founded IONS almost 50 years ago because his trip to space revealed to him the need for humanity to tell a new story. And he said, there's no such thing as the paranormal or the supernatural, only limitations in our understanding of what is normal and natural for our species. And there's no one better to lead us today in an experiential exploration of a new normal and of our true nature than Greg Braden. And I'll introduce him to you now. Greg is a five time New York Times bestselling author, scientist and pioneer in the emerging paradigm, bridging science, social policy and human potential. His research has led to 15 film credits, 12 award-winning books now published in over 40 languages. And he was a 2020 nominee for the prestigious Templeton Prize created to recognize those who have harnessed the power of science to explore the deepest questions of the universe and mankind's place and purpose within it. He's presented his discoveries in over 34 countries on six continents, speaking to the UN, Fortune 500 companies and the US military among others. He's a member of scientific and visionary organizations including the American Association for the Advancement of Science, the Laszlo Institute of New Paradigm Research, we love Irvin Laszlo here, the Galileo Society, HeartMath Institute's Global Coherence Initiative and the Arlington Institute. He was also an original signatory of the 2017 Fuji Declaration an international call to collectively catalyze a timely shift in the course of human history. And of course, that's why we're here today too. So Greg, welcome back to the Global Coherence Pulse. Thank you for being here. Oh, Claudia, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for just such a, a beautiful introduction. I could listen to you all day. I, I love listening to you sharing your stories of uh, Ed Mitchell, uh, the founding of IONS. I had the honor and the privilege of touring with uh, Edgar Mitchell back in the 1990s when we were on the, the, uh, the conference circuit. And, uh, and I, I can't help but think that what we're doing now, he's, he is witnessing and facilitating from another realm uh, in the way that, that he loved to do. So uh, I want to thank you, uh, Teresa, thank you for, for your beautiful opening. And you know, the film that opened this, uh, our time together today so beautifully encapsulated everything that we're going to do. So uh, that's why I'm going to pick up where that film left off. 
but before that, I, I just want to welcome everyone who is sharing a part of your day with us today. As the intro film clip was rolling, I saw uh, people in the chat room, and there are people from every continent of this planet, almost every nation. It was interesting. Uh, the, I saw the cities in the United States only started showing up later. I thought, wow, this is this is a global audience. Where's America? <laughs> but I saw Ohio and I saw Texas and California. So welcome, everyone. Thank you. And I, I just I want to thank you for your trust because you are trusting us with a, a precious hour, maybe an hour and a half of, uh, of your life tonight. And some of you, it is your evening on the other side of the planet. And I just want you to know how much it means to us, how much we appreciate your trust and how we strive to honor and make it worth your time to honor your trust and what we bring to you. And that's what I'm going to do with this presentation. Uh, you know, we talk about coherence and we talk about our relationship to coherence, our ability to generate that coherence within our bodies, beginning with our hearts. Uh, I have had the opportunity and the privilege to work with the Institute of Heart Math since the year of their inception. So over a quarter of a century, we've been sharing this message. We've been sharing the techniques and the information. And I know many of you have supported me and you've followed me for that quarter of a century. So what I wanted to do today is go beyond simply acknowledging the heart and powerfully acknowledging the heart. We will do that. And we will have uh, the opportunity to generate that, that coherence in our own bodies. But I wanna share with you the new discoveries that change the way we think about ourselves, our story, because those discoveries are changing our ability to respond in a healthy way to what Claudia was describing so eloquently is, is the shift that we're seeing in our world today. Our world is changing. Wow, is it ever changing? My world is changing and your world is changing. You know, we do not know for certain, no one can know for certain where these changes will lead. We can speculate, we can make plans. How many have stopped making plans? <laughs> because uh, it's almost meaningless to make plans in the presence of a world with so many uncertainties. So we cannot know, we don't have a crystal ball. We cannot know with certainty where the world will lead, but we can with absolute certainty determine how we respond to what the world has brought to our doorstep. We have the ability and we have had the ability since we emerged on this earth as the human species 200,000 years before present. We showed up on this planet and we were ready for action. We showed up on this planet and we were wired to adapt and thrive in times of extremes. The new DNA science, we now have the ability to extract the DNA from the fossilized remains of the beings that we used to believe were our ancestors. Now that we can compare their DNA to ours, what we're finding is we did not descend from the primitive forms of life that we used to believe we descended from. This is causing a big ripple of, of a problem in, uh, in the biological sciences, because if we didn't descend from those other forms of life, what does that mean for us? If we showed up already enabled, fully enabled, fully capacitated 200,000 years ago with all of the extraordinary potentials that we have today, it means that we are wired to thrive. You and I are made for times just like this. And this is a message that you're not being uh, told in the mainstream. You're not hearing this message in mainstream classrooms, textbooks, mainstream media. So it's a big message. And I fully realize what I just said is a big message. I'm going to zero in on a specific aspect of this message to give us some context, to go beyond simply focusing in the heart. That's important. But what I want you to see is that when you focus in your heart, you are creating coherence in your body, you are creating coherence with the world around your body, but you're doing so much more. And it is the so much more that I've found in our live audiences that empowers people and gives them a reason to understand why it's so important to create this coherence. So once you see it, you can't unsee it. So I'm going to, I prepared some slides. I'm going to share my screen with you right now. I know you all in the age of Zoom, you've seen this probably a million times. You've seen people doing this now. <clears throat> I 
And I'm going to need, uh, can someone pop on and give me a thumbs up? Are you seeing a full screen image and you're seeing a little Greg in the corner? Is this yes. coming through? Yep. Okay, good. Thank, good. Both. Thank, thank you. I, I didn't want to get halfway through the presentation and, and discover <laughs> that people aren't seeing the presentation. So I want to, to talk about our story. Claudia began this conversation and, and Ed Mitchell started this conversation through his experiences years ago. Our story is the way that you and I have been taught to think about ourselves. And I know when I say the word story, for some people, there's a sense that maybe this is an academic conversation or, you know, a philosophical conversation that we have over a, a latte, you know, at, at a Starbucks somewhere. The world that you and I are living in right now has brought the topic of our story front and center in our lives. And I want you to see why this is right now. Our story matters. The reason it matters is because we live our lives based upon our story. We live our lives based upon the way that we have been taught to think about ourselves by our family, our friends, our community, universities, our religion, our culture, society, the media, and our own experience all contribute to our story. And the way we think about ourselves determines how we live every day of our lives. It determines how we solve our problems. And we all have problems. I mean, sometimes they're little problems of, of logistics, getting the kids to, to soccer practice or school. Sometimes they're, they're big problems dealing with global issues. But the way we solve our problems is determined by the way we think of ourselves. Our relationships, think about this. Every relationship that you've ever had in your life is based upon the way you've been taught to think about yourself. Every friendship that you've ever had, everyone that you've ever invited into your home, everyone that you've ever invited into your most intimate relationships are based upon your story. The way that we heal our bodies is based upon our story. When you go to a, a, a doctor of some kind or a, a professional that you trust and respect, and that professional says, something is happening in your body that doesn't look the way we would expect it to look. When you get that kind of news, the way you respond is based upon the way you've been taught to think about yourself, the potential within you, your capacity to communicate with your body in, in a healthy way. We heal our bodies, we choose our politics. I mean, there's a whole conversation we could have here. Elections are happening, not just in America, all over the world. And the way that we engage in that process is based upon the way we've been taught to think about ourselves. We build our society, think about this, the policies that we enact, the laws that we pass are all based upon our story. So I wanted to say this early on because I think you can see from this, far from being academic, what could be more important? Our story has come from the back burner of academic conversation. It is front and center for us all because the world just changed. And if we're trying to meet that change through an old story based upon false assumptions of obsolete science and things that aren't true, this is where our suffering comes from. I'm gonna give you a reason to change that story. The old story that you and I have been steeped in. I was in school in the 1950s, 1960s, early 1970s. I was taught that we are weak, that we are vulnerable and that we need something outside of our bodies to feel good and to feel healthy. We are being taught right now that we need technology, that we need computer chips in our bodies or artificial intelligence or wires or drugs to enhance our potential. There is an entire movement based upon this belief is called the transhuman movement where young people are being taught that carbon-based life is flawed, that we are weak and flawed, and that we, our only hope of survival is to embrace the outer technology and bring it into our bodies. Well, I'm not gonna say it's right, wrong, good, or bad. But what I'm gonna say is it's a slippery slope. And the more of our biology that we compromise through external technology, the more of ourselves we begin to lose. So before we give ourselves away, I think we need to understand who we are and what our potential really is. And new discoveries are telling us just that. So I'm going to go through just a couple of discoveries and they're going to lead right into, into our, our experience today. Discovery number one, if you're taking notes, I, I arranged this uh, numerically to help with, with any notes. 
I'm going to invite you for context. I'm going to invite you to think about your body a little bit differently. Rather than thinking of yourself as vulnerable cells, you know, these, a lot of people think of cells as, as these little packets of, of salt water, saline in our bodies. That, and we always have to defend ourselves from the very environment that gives us life. We're taught to fear the world around us. I'm going to give you a little bit different way to think about this. And it's because of this different way of thinking that when we embrace our coherence, you're going to see it's a lot more, a lot, lot more than the coherence within our bodies. And that's what makes us so exciting. So the average adult, whatever average is, has about 50 trillion or so cells in the human body, give or take. Every one of those cells has an electrical potential. It generates about 0 0.07 volts of electrical potential, 0 0.07. And you say, you know, Greg, that's, that's not very much. And I say, you know, you're right. For each cell, it's not very much. But let's do the math. 0 0.07 volts times 50 trillion cells. Check this out. 3.5 trillion volts of electrical potential you have access to through your body. Now, I know I've, I've seen this. In conferences, I make this statement and people take the notes. They write it down, 3.5 trillion volts. What does that mean? Let me, get, let me just give you a, a little context here. What, what does this mean? What you're seeing on the screen right now, this is a 12-volt battery. You've probably seen these in your automobile, uh, your truck, your bus, your van. Or uh, these are the kinds of batteries that are now storing energy from the solar systems, the solar grids that we're, we're building and, and the systems that we're installing into our homes. This is a 12 volt battery. It takes 3 billion of these 12 volt batteries to equal the potential within you. 3 billion 12 volt batteries equals one electrical human potential. Think about that. Think about that. Think about what you could do with that kind of energy. Well, what if you could harness that energy through coherence and direct it to healing within your own body or to the longevity enzymes? You know, when I was listening to the, um, the poll that we all participated in at the beginning and uh, Teresa was talking about the age groups, what I kept feeling is, you know, we're all ageless. There are chronological years that mark the time we've walked this earth. But when we begin to let go, of that thinking. We simply are. We simply be in this world. And there is a biological implication to that. So what if we could direct all of, of that 3.5 trillion volts of electrical potential toward the rejuvenation and the regeneration of a body that is made to regenerate, made to rejuvenate, made to heal? But it doesn't stop there. Look at this. Every cell in your body functions as a transistor and a resistor. And if, you're, if, if you remember the time we had the old-fashioned radios and televisions and, uh, and telephones, you could look inside and you could see those transistors and resistors. They used to look like this. Not anymore. If you're in a younger generation, they're all, they're all on this chip. That's how far we've come with technology. But every cell in your body functions as a transistor and resistor. It massages the electrical information that's moving through your body. Every cell in your body functions as a capacitor. It stores and releases information at precise times in just the right way. Every cell in your body releases photons of light. You are a light being. I know you've heard this, but science now has confirmed this. We can measure it. We can photograph it. You release photons of light and you absorb photons of light. Well, the light is more than optics. Light is information. And what that means is that you are in constant dialogue with the world around you. You are communicating, constantly communicating with the field that connects all things. That's another conversation that we could have, but I, I know you all sense, at least intuitively, and many of you know scientifically, there is in fact a field that underlies our existence. We're, we're, it's not out there. We are that field. The field is emerging and collapsing in every atom of our bodies. And the photons of light are a lot of where that information is coming from. Every cell in your body, this is a T cell, and you're all hearing about T cells in the news because of COVID. This is a T cell that you're seeing in the green. Every cell in your body has little receptors on the exterior of the cell membrane. They're antenna. They are emitting and receiving 
very specific kinds of information that direct other cells. Every cell in your body, the DNA, the very DNA in your body and the genes that make up that DNA, they are antenna. They are communicating with very specific wavelengths of energy, information, light, electrical and magnetic fields. So you begin to see, I hope you're getting the idea here. You're much more, you're much more than this flawed carbon-based vulnerable weak being walking the earth, you are a highly advanced, highly sophisticated, technologically advanced technology, but it's not the technology that we think of outside of our bodies. We are soft technology is actually what it's called. Every cell in your body stores and retrieves information just like we do on the computer chips. Now, I'm going to say something, and this could open the door to an entire conversation. It's fascinating. Every cell in your body that does all these things and so much more, if you think about it, the technology that we build outside of our bodies mimics what we already do, except we do it better. We do it better. There is an emerging philosophy in some segments of the scientific community. And I'm, I'm just going to share this and I'm going to move on quickly. I want you to think about this. The philosophy suggests that consciousness informs itself through its creations. Now think about that. Consciousness informs itself. Consciousness is telling us things that we are asking ourselves to remember about ourselves, and we are doing it through the things we create. So our art, our music, it's entertaining, it's fun, sure. But is it possible that all of our art, all of our music, our sculptures, our paintings, our drawings, the books I write, and the poetry that I write, and the music that people play, is it possible that all of that is us inviting ourselves to remember something about ourselves? And if the answer to that is yes, then could that principle extend to the technology? All of the advanced technology that we're building outside of our bodies I just have to tell you, I worked in the tech industry uh, during the Cold War years, the Star Wars Defense Initiative back in, in the 1980s. I've seen high tech. I've never seen any, I will say, I've yet to see anything out there that doesn't mimic what we already do in our bodies, except we do it better. We do it better. The wires, the chips, the chemicals, they mimic our natural neurons, our blood and our cells. Literally, we are the technology that we're searching for. We're trying to build the stuff out there. We are that technology, except we do it better. Our neural networks, our ability, our, our abilities that give us our humanness, our sympathy, empathy, our compassion, and our ability to self-regulate our biology. That's where we're going with this. All of that potential that I just shared with you, and so much more, you and I regulate. We regulate this potential, and we do it through the operating systems of thoughts, feelings, emotions, beliefs, breath, focus. Discovery number two, where a lot of that thought, feeling, emotion, breath, and focus begins to open the door to our highest levels of mastery is through the human heart. Now, intuitively, we've known that, our indigenous ancestors have known that, and as both Teresa and, um, and Claudia, uh, stated so eloquently, science is on our side. Science now is beginning to help us to understand what this means. It's just not being shared. Again, it's not being shared in the mainstream because it, it opens the door to a different story. You and I are living this crossroads of the human story. Who are we? What are our capabilities? What are our potentials? How much do we give away to the machines? Because once we give it away, it begins to atrophy in our bodies. Once we begin to implant chips and wires and chemicals into our body, our body says, well, I don't need to do my job anymore because these things are doing it for me in one generation. The next generation, pretty soon, those abilities, the body doesn't even do those. The neurons don't connect the same way. The cells don't function the same way. And we lose the very essence of our humanness. How much of ourselves do we want to give away to the technology? We can't answer that until we know who we are. And what I'm gonna share with you now goes to the core. It is the essence of what empowers us. It's love. 
we're talking about love. And the bottom line, the word I'm going to say to you, it's the question, do we love ourselves enough to live our lives in a way that empowers our greatest potential? All right, what is that potential? Let's, let's check this out. 1991, a discovery was made that rocked the world of biology because it was the discovery of 40,000, approximately, 40,000 specialized cells in the human heart, sensory neurites. They were like brain cells, but they're not in the cranial brain. They're in the heart. I wanted to share this with you. I, I was able to get this uh, just recently. For the first time, we have a 3D map where you can actually see these neurons. And I want to show this to you because I want you to know this is more than a metaphor. This isn't new thought, new age, wishful thinking. This is rock solid science. And once you see this, you can't unsee it. The, the yellow, little yellow dots that you're seeing there, those are the sensory neurites that we're gonna be communicating with through breath and focus and awareness and touch. This is what we're going to be doing. And if you notice what's, what's so interesting, if you'll notice that those sensory neurites, look at where they are. They are around the valves that regulate the flow of the blood. They're around the arteries that regulate the blood coming in and the blood leaving. We communicate with those sensory neurites. That's why we are able to regulate, self-regulate blood pressure uh, when we feel anxiety and how we dissipate that anxiety. So I, just, I wanted to show this to you because this is what we're gonna be working with. It makes it very real. The neurons in the heart, they learn independently of the neurons in the brain. Every experience, every relationship, every loss, every hurt, every joy, every ecstasy you've ever had. You've experienced it not only in the cranial brain, but in your heart. You know that, and I know that, because we feel it. I'll just be very honest. It's very present with me right now. I lost my mom to COVID, right? Uh, it was just during the holidays. And in my mind, my man brain felt that it was prepared for that kind of loss. Even knowing that, my heart had to go through, and I'm still going through it. It's, it's a process, it's not an event. I know many of you have, have lost, way more people have lost way more loved ones during this, this pandemic than we even like to, to think about. But if it were not for the techniques I'm going to share with you today, uh, I believe that I would not have been able to embrace my mom's passing in, in such a healthy way. And this is the reason why, because it's about more than talking about it and thinking about it and trying to heal a cranial memory. A memory. It's, it's a memory in the heart. The neurons in the heart, they have their own neural network. They learn, they remember, they feel, they think, they access wisdom and intelligence independent of the cranial brain. That's what makes our humanness so rare and so precious. And that's one of the reasons we do not want to give it away to the technology, because once it's gone, it's gone. And there's a whole conversation we can have about that. Discovery number three, I want to say to you that you are the only form of life. I know that you know you're special, but I'm, I'm here to tell you, you are rare, you are so precious, you are so special, you are the only form of life that we know of right now on this planet I'm sure there are some on other forms of life in other worlds, other planets. You're the only form of life that has the ability to do what I'm going to share with you, to harmonize the neurons in your brain and the neurons in your heart. Two organs, two separate organs with neurons, you harmonize them into one system in your body. It's called coherence. Of course, that's what we're talking about today. Heart, brain, coherence. Optimum coherence, when you can create a signal between your heart and your brain at a very low frequency, 0.1 hertz, that's optimum. I just want to show you quickly. I'm, I'm uh, an earth scientist first. I'm a degree geologist with a background in, in geophysics. Uh, and this is exciting for me because as a scientist, it just gives me a reason to really embrace what it is that we're going to do together. Why? Why 0.1 hertz? Why not some other hertz? Why not 7.8 hertz? You know, the, the base frequency of, uh, of Schumann resonance or something like that. Well, look at this. Look at this. This is a cross-section of this beautiful planet we live on that Ed Mitchell saw from space that changed his life and by virtue of that, that changed our world through him implementing his vision as ions. 
This is a cross section of Earth in the magnetic fields in, in a cutaway. And what I want you to see, this is a, a schematic. This is an actual NASA image, and I'm going to set it into motion. There's our little planet in the very center, that little dark ball. And all of those lines that you're seeing around it, those are the magnetic fields. They're responding to the energy of the sun on the left-hand side of your screen. The plasma, the solar wind, is pushing against those magnetic fields, plucking those waves like strings on a guitar. And when that happens, there is a frequency that's generated. Now, I want to show you something about this frequency. This is a chart. And I don't want it to be really technical, but I do want to honor you with, with the, the technical term. This is the magnetic field line resonance frequency. And what I want you to see where that red arrow is, that first big spike of that frequency, look at what the frequency is. It's not zero. It's not 0 0.2. Look at what it is. It, and I know this is a highly intuitive guess that everyone is making right now. It's right in between 0.1. It's 0.1 hertz. And if that sounds familiar, it should, because we just talked about it. The first spike in this magnetic field line resonant frequency, that first strong spike is exactly the frequency that optimizes our relationship between our heart and our brain. When you optimize that relationship between your heart and your brain, you have access to all the potentials that I just talked to you about, all the capacitance, all the resistance, harmonizing all that electrical potential it all begins with this coherence so optimum heart brain coherence is 0.1 hertz now this is a global pulse event what's good for you your personal coherence is really good for the planet because by loving yourself enough to allow this harmony within your body it brings you into alignment with the fundamental magnetic frequency, the planet you live on. Think about this. You are aligning your body energetically with the power, the fundamental frequency of an entire planet. That's why this is so powerful. That's why so much healing can come from this. This is, this is the highest mastery, the, the highest level of mastery, self-regulation of our biology so that we can access this extraordinary potential within us. Now, what the science is showing and the Global Coherence Initiative has documented and validated and continues to work with um, through the Global Consciousness Project, the Global Coherence Initiative, Princeton University, for over a quarter of a century. The studies now are confirming that when we create that coherence within us, we influence the coherence around us. It can happen in your family at the dinner table. It can happen in a, a conference room, in a corporate boardroom. It can happen in a community. It can happen in a city. It can happen in a nation. And it does happen for the planet. And we know that. So what I wanted to do before we go into actually creating this pulse today, I wanted to give you a sense and some context of just what a powerful being you are to shift your story, the new human story and what it's saying to us about who we are our relationship to our own bodies, our extraordinary capacities, the extraordinary potential that lives within us because every one of us is being challenged right now, not just because of the pandemic. The pandemic has brought it front and center with our immune response. When you create this kind of, of coherence within your body, the studies are very clear that we support, we strengthen our immune response on demand. You know how powerful that is. We're the only form of life that can sit down in a moment in time and say, in this moment, I choose. I choose to create this coherence between my heart and my brain, this balance between my heart and my brain. And by doing that, what the studies show is we are strengthening our, our immune system on demand, that we're opening the doors to deep states of intuition on demand, that we awaken our longevity enzymes on demand, that we open deep states of communication, of heart-based communication between ourselves and one another and nature and the world around us. And as uh, Teresa and, and Claudia were talking about, the trees and the plants, all forms of life. We are opening the door to this deep, deep understanding and it's happening precisely when we need it so that we can transcend, not just survive, but transcend and thrive the changes that the world has brought to us and it all begins with coherence. So how do we do this coherence? 
the Institute of Heart Math has refined the techniques, three simple techniques. And I'm going to talk you through these. But one of them is breath. And I want to talk to you about breath just a little bit because there's a, a lot of confusion around this. What, what I want you to see on your screen, I want you to see that when you inhale right now and you push your tummy out just a little bit, watch how it drops the diaphragm so that you can get a full breath. All right. That dropping of the diaphragm. And I'm going to invite you as we exhale to allow our exhale to last a little bit longer than the inhale. In a longer program, I could go into more detail, but what I will say to you is this is a direct communication to your vagus nerve. And that vagus nerve is regulating so much of your response to the world around you. And if you're feeling anxiety, man, who's not feeling a little anxiety in the world these days? <clears throat> Just the breath, the inhale, uh, and then the exhale lasting longer than the inhale, maybe six seconds on an inhale and eight to 10 seconds on an exhale, depending on your lung capacity. That sends a very powerful signal to your body that says, I'm safe. And when you're safe, you open the door to so many of the potentials that we're talking about. So we've just covered a lot of ground. We have done this together. Uh, and I, I hope this helps you. I realized that was a lot of information and I spoke quickly. Um, intentionally because I didn't want to get bogged down in any one topic. You can see how many of those topics could be a whole conversation under themselves. And I, I acknowledge that, but we're going somewhere with this. This is a new human story. We're not what we've been told. We're more than we've imagined. And as we embrace the deep truth of our potential, we rewrite the possibilities for the world that we now find at our doorstep, new hope, new possibilities in a new year. And it helps us personally to navigate through these deep waters, even when we're not supported by friends and family and colleagues, because they're thinking differently. This knowledge, rock solid science, this isn't Greg's theory, it's not my hypothesis. This is all based on rock solid science. It gives us a reason to awaken this deep potential within us and we become leaders in our own lives. We become leaders in our personal lives, leaders in our families, leaders in our communities, because we do something first and it opens the door for others to follow in a way that makes sense for them. And this is how we meet the challenges of the new world in a healthy way. And that's the key. We want to not just survive, but to thrive in a healthy way. So I know uh, we just did a lot of talking. Let's do this together. I love this slide. Let's do it. So I'm going to invite you to put your pencils, papers down. You won't need any notes. Please, if you are listening to this while you're driving, do not do what I'm about to invite you to do. Only do this if you are in a safe place where you have no distractions uh, and all of your focus and attention can be with yourself. So I'm going to put uh, a little sound on to average out any background sounds that may be happening here. Now you have a better sense of what we're doing. Now we just get to do it. The beauty is we don't have to know any of that, but once you see it, you feel differently about yourself. And this is a way of honoring this extraordinary potential within us. So if you haven't done so already, I'm gonna invite you to close your eyes and allow the world around you to be as it is and shift your focus to the world within. I'm gonna do the same thing right here. And the first step I'm gonna invite you to do is to allow your awareness to move from your thinking mind to your feeling heart. Our indigenous ancestors gave us the tools to help us to do this by gently touching our heart center in a way that's comfortable for us. I'm gonna invite you to do the same. If it feels appropriate to you, I'm gonna invite you to gently touch your heart center and allow your awareness to go to the place where you feel that touch. This is the key, your awareness will always go to the place on your body where you feel that sensation. And that's why you touch your heart. So we're shifting our awareness from our thinking mind into our feeling heart. That's the first step. The second step. The second step, I'm going to invite you to slow your breathing. 
just a little bit slower than you would typically breathe. And as we saw in the slides, I'm going to invite you to allow your exhale to be slightly, just slightly longer than the inhale to reset that vagus nerve in your nervous system. You're telling your body, I am safe. Let's do this together. Let's do a few of these breaths. The first breath, inhale. And release. Inhale. Inhale again. Just feel that shift in your body. And release. One more inhale. And as you release to the best of your ability, continue to breathe just about that pace. That's the second step. Now, I want you to know that if you feel anxiety during the day from whatever your day is showing you, these two steps alone will help you to reset your biology. If you don't have time to go through all three steps, just Focusing in your heart and slowing your breath is a powerful tool of self-regulation. We're going to take this one step further. We're going to create coherence. The third step, I'm going to invite you to do something again that no other form of life can do, and that is to have a feeling because you choose to have the feeling rather than waiting for the world to give you the reason to have the feeling. Do you know how powerful that is? When you have a feeling, you change the chemistry in your body to match that feeling, and you are choosing to change that chemistry right now. To the best of your ability, if you can feel a positive, life-affirming emotion, and for ease right now, I'm going to invite you to feel gratitude. And that's an easy one for me. I'm so deeply grateful to be here with you in this way, in this time. I'm grateful for our lives. I'm grateful for the possibilities, the potential of a new world and a new year. I'm grateful for our bodies to the best of your ability. If you can feel the feeling of gratitude as you breathe and focus and it all happens in the heart. I'm going to give you just a few seconds to do that. I'm going to do the same. We inhale. Release. And feel the feeling of that gratitude. Mm. Say thank you. Thank you for all of the joy and the beauty in my life. This is where the science comes in because the coherence that you're creating in your body is not limited to the boundary of your flesh. That coherence is feeding the field that nourishes and nurtures all life everywhere. Distance is of no consequence. There's a field that is emerging and collapsing within your being, and you are communicating with that field through breath, focus, and feeling. Mm, The world needs this coherence right now. In the presence of coherence, we're more willing to work together, to cooperate, to solve our problems. We're better listeners. Just from what you're doing right now, 
powerful being you are. Mm. Pulsing this coherence into the field. Feel it with each breath. I invite you to take one more breath, inhale with me. And as you release that breath, release that breath and just feel that pulse feeding the field and gently begin to open your eyes and become present in the space that you've created for yourself today. I've had people say to me, Greg, it can't be that easy. As a scientist, what I say to them and what I'll share with you is that nature is simple and life is simple until we make it complex. Through language, numbers, symbols, we can do that and make it very complex. But the beauty is we emerged on this earth 200,000 years ago mysteriously. We honestly do not know with certainty, what created the simultaneous mutations and the genetic fusions that give us the abilities that we have today, we do know that we haven't changed in those 200,000 years physically. We've evolved in consciousness, but we haven't changed physically. So we arrived here with the ability to interact with the world around us, and that is what the new human story is really all about. Now, I'm just going to leave you with this. I want you when you think about yourself, you look in the mirror in the morning, I want you to know that you are a highly advanced, technologically sophisticated, soft technology with the ability to self-regulate all of that inner technology through thought, feeling, emotion, belief, breath, focus in the heart. <clears throat> and that when you do that for yourself, when you love yourself enough, and your body will interpret 0.1, point, point 0.1 hertz, your body interprets that as love. And it's what frees your system to be at its best. By loving yourself, you're loving the world. You're loving the planet that we live on. What beautiful symmetry. How simple, how sacred, how profound. <clears throat> Heart, brain, coherence, our pulse. We have just fed this field together. And I want to thank you all for the opportunity to share in this feast that we fed the field. And, uh, and with that, um, I think this is a close for, for my time. So I am going to turn this back over to Teresa, but I think we have time maybe to take, uh, have a little, little conversation and Teresa, maybe there's some questions that have come up. So, uh, so thank you for that. I'm going to leave this presentation. I'll go back into the full screen. Thank you, Greg. So it's so powerful um, what you share about the science that tells us exactly what it is that we have in our own being to support us to really uh, activate our vast potential. And I want to invite Claudia to come on too. And I'm sure she has some closing comments she'd like to make uh, for us with us today. See you know, I could. <laughs> uh -huh. I think the uh, boy, Greg is just such an amazing communicator on this really complex topic. He finds a way to cut through to the simplicity on the other side of all the complexity. And I'm so grateful. I don't mm -hmm. want to try to gild this lily. 
Um, I do know that there are a few questions in the Q&A box, so maybe we'd like to turn to those since Greg invited it. Yeah, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm happy to. You know, I, again, we had a limited amount of time, but this is, it's up for everybody right now because technology is moving so fast and there are some societies moving even faster than we are here in, in uh, America and Europe who are embracing this technology, not just around them, but within them, without really understanding the, the consequences of that potential or without understanding that they have the very abilities that they are inviting into their bodies. They've just never been told that they have those abilities, except we do it better. We do it better. So, uh, so what the, we have a, a question that, that can speak to that, Claudia or, or Teresa? You see one there, Claudia. I know somebody put a, a link in the or put something in the chat, Greg, that I've seen before when you talked about we're the only species that can mm. choose to change our emotion, right? And so they were saying, but what about the animals? Sure. And so I just wanted you to speak to that. Uh, yeah. And I, you know, when I began to understand this as a scientist, that was I'm an animal lover. It was one of the first questions that that I had. Animals appear to do this instinctively. Yeah. So they, it's a natural impulse for them. They appear uh, to, at least it hasn't been documented, the best of my knowledge, to, they don't consciously sit down and choose a time and a place and an environment and say, huh, you know, in this moment, in this exact moment, I feel like I need a stronger immune system. So I'm, I'm going to awaken this potential within me or, or those longevity enzymes or have the discipline to love themselves enough to do it at a certain time or a certain way every day. Animals certainly, uh, and especially, uh, well, even insects, some insects, it appears, may have the ability to, to create that harmony. It's not done consciously by choice. It is a, a natural way of being, a natural instinct for them. And, and this is what sets us apart. Yeah, beautiful. I, I knew that was your, I knew that was your answer. Mm. It's that, that uh, you know, we need to actually choose to evoke emotions in the face of the challenges, right? So as we face a challenge where we find ourselves constricted or, or feeling fear, that's the moment where we can choose in that moment to change our physiology sure. and have a better impact. This is where our highest levels of mastery come from. When I, I, many of our viewers know, I used to lead groups in the Tibet. Um, it's not possible now. We used to do 26 day trips, 12 monasteries, two nunneries, 18,000 feet above sea level. And these are the conversations we would have with the monks and the nuns and, and the abbots about the, the ability to, to self-regulate emotion. We are so conditioned to respond to what the world shows to us. So people, you hear this, people say this all the time, I need something to make me feel good. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we all, we, you know, we all do that. I'm a musician, well, I'm a musician long before I was an author, and music does it for me. But what I also know is that, it's just what you said, Teresa, when the world looks really dark, and we have a lot of reasons to be inundated uh, with that darkness now, we determine how we respond and how we perceive that and we can redefine in our own psyche, our own consciousness, what it is that we're being shown and reframe it. Uh, and there are a lot of things to be grateful for right now. We're, you know, we're inundated with the bad news, but there's a lot of really good news out there. I, I do entire programs. The good news, let me just share some of the good news. The good news is we already have all of the solutions for all of the big problems that face us in the world today. We have all the technological solutions of food, of energy with no fossil fuels, no greenhouse gases that doesn't depend on weather. We know how to build business and economy based on sharing and cooperation rather than scarcity and competition. We know how to heal our bodies. Every organ in the human body is documented with the ability to reverse the disease, stop the disease, and regenerate and heal itself, it has to be given the environment. And when you hear, and there's more, when you hear all of that good news, you say, well, where is it? Where are all of these things? And it comes down to what we did today. It all comes down to the way we've been taught to think about ourselves. And as we embrace the deep truth of a new human story, these solutions become the natural go-to solutions that we would expect rather than the anomalous one-offs that we try to impose. And, and that's why, I mean, this is, 
this is, it's massive. It all comes down to the way that we think about ourselves and our relationship to our bodies in the world, our story. And we are writing a new human story. Uh, I will just share one reflection on that because I have shared this on the Pulse before, which was that um, I was with the Dalai Lama when he said, uh, when the world looks bad, look at a flower. There mm. is another truth. And I remember um, just feeling so much gratitude in that moment for him and for HeartMath where I first learned that looking at a flower when the world looks bad is not being irresponsible. It doesn't mean I'm turning my back on the pain and suffering that I could be paying attention to. Mm -hmm. What it means instead is that I am choosing to vibrate at the frequency of appreciation for that flower. And then as you've said, Greg, you said in August, you put it this way, which I won't forget, the coherence within us becomes the coherence around us. Mm -hmm. When I realized that, I made the commitment to put my attention, which will provide me the frequency that I want to be sharing with the world to help lift the suffering and the pain that I, you know, in most cases can't do anything about personally. But because of our biofields, because of the electromagnetic fields, when we radiate at that, that frequency vibe, we are creating the conditions for all boats to rise. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's so beautiful. I, I didn't know that my words uh, resonated with you in, in that way. So thank you. It's good for me to, it's been a tough couple of weeks. It's good for me to hear that. Claudia, I appreciate it. I, I just, I want to invite everyone first, thank you all for sharing on a very intimate level what we have just shared. This is a deeply intimate experience. Mm -hmm. and, and I think one of the things that we're finding in this age of COVID where we are not physically together, we're linked the way we are, we're much more than photons on a computer screen. I don't know about you all, but I feel differently now than I did when we came in. And I feel you, I feel the support and the love. And I'm just gonna invite everyone watching, just make a mental note. How do you feel right now? How does mm -hmm. your body feel? How does your attitude feel? How do you feel about the world that you find yourself in and your ability to contribute in some way in some way, we need what everybody has to contribute. So if the universe is tapping you on the shoulder right now to be creative, whether it's a song or a book or your art or a scientific discovery or an eloquent equation, whatever it is, that is the universe asking you to share your unique gifts. And we need them right now because we're building a new world. We're building a brand new world. Yeah, yeah. beautiful. Let's, uh, let's leave Greg spotlighted for a moment. And everybody that is on the line, we had like a thousand people join us here. We had another hundreds of people on Facebook. And I just want us all just to take this love that we're feeling right now and let's send it to Greg to support him for all he's doing to really help bring this new story out. And we'll just do that just for a minute, Greg. You just take in all of our love right now. your pioneering heart, your courageous heart. Appreciate it so, so much, Greg, really. Oh, thank you all, thank you all. Mm. You know, I love everyone out there. I love this planet. <laughs> I love this world. And I, I love our global family so much. And I just, I'm so deeply appreciative of everybody hanging in there to go through this, this birthing process. Mm. Yes. You know. I'm going to share some announcements, so stay with us just for a minute. This. Here we go. Okay. So yeah, we put some links in the chat, but there's some other ways that you can connect with Greg coming up tonight. Uh, Greg and I are going to be on the Saturday night, a live event, and we're going to continue this story. We're going to be answering this question together of 
how do we awaken our vast potential together? And so this lineup of musicians and artists and speakers are all going to be sharing about that tonight. And we're going to invite you to reflect on your thoughts and ideas about that. And Greg, you're also going to be uh, on, let's see. Uh, you're going to be with HeartMath on March 26th through the 28th for their first virtual event. They usually go to Mexico and they have a big gathering there. And this year we can't do that. So Claudia also, Greg, Roland, uh, Howard Martin and Deborah are all going to be there for three days, uh, really taking us through some of the, um, the curriculum and ways that we can keep uh, pulsing the field with coherence. I don't know if you want to say something about that, Greg. Yeah, but... you know, I just I'm I am honored to be here with you today, Teresa, and I'm so honored to be with these beautiful, beautiful hearts, brilliant minds for this program. You know, beyond the science, we all have known one another for a very long time. We've toured together. We have retreated together. We've dedicated our lives to the message that we're sharing. And, and this program is a, the opportunity to distill the essence of 25, 30, 40 years of work down into what is most potent and most applicable and most concrete and tangible and fun. So it, it's even more fun because this group loves one another. And I think that makes all the difference in the world. We love and respect one another. It makes it easy to share together in the way that we do. And uh, when they invited me to, to be part of this lineup, I had a big, big smile on my face ear to ear. <laughs> so uh, I, I don't want to saturate our audience with too much Greg. I know you're doing a lot of, of Greg programs, but, uh, but I am excited and, uh, and very, very honored to be a, a part of this Global Coherence virtual event. So thank you, Teresa, for, for mentioning that today. Yeah, well, Greg, it's, I think it's important. I think people are really, um, this is the message that we need right now. You're going you're gonna to be doing a little deeper dive into this with Foster and Kimberly mm -hmm. on a show on the 27th. And um, all these links are going in the chat for you guys. So please check out these opportunities for us to continue this really important conversation. Yeah. Uh, we have our next Global Coherence Pulse on the third Saturday of March, uh, and this one is going to be with Roland and Claudia and Minos, so definitely come on for that one. It'll be right before the big event, the HeartMath event, so we look forward to having you guys join us for that. It's always nice to have Claudia um, and, Min and Minos and Roland on, and Claudia will be leading our Coherence Pulse meditation on this call. And we have actually been granted a matching grant for the Global Coherence Pulse. These are offered for free. Uh, they're really a gift of love. And we have a donor that has stepped up to do a $5,000 matching grant for us so that we can continue to do this work and expand our reach and our numbers. So there's a link in the chat. If you can give a little bit and we can reach this $5,000 uh, goal. Uh, and have what we need to really carry us through this year and keep uh, doing more and more work like this. We just got this from, uh, Greg, you don't know this yet, I don't think, but we just got this from Roland yesterday and they reached a uh, 50.5 million coherence pulse uh, points on the app. Now, this is probably a small number because only the people that were on the app that had a sensor were we able to document this? So that's why it's really great for more and more people to get on the app and also to get a sensor. But it translates to 28 at 28,056 hours of focus, love, and compassion pulsing the planet together. And that's wow. just the beginning. Isn't that amazing? Wow. So can I say a couple words about this, yes, Teresa? Please. So it, you're you're correct. This is the first time I've seen this number. Um, when we first started doing this and we were giving the readings, we would get maybe uh, one, one reading from, uh, I'm just going to think of a specific instance, in Japan. Uh, and we looked at the clock and it was like 4 a.m. in Japan, and here's this reading in Japan. So we investigated a little bit. It was one sensor, but yeah. it was in a theater where 300 people would gather together before they went to work in the morning. They would get up and go and 
and feed the field, love the earth for, uh, for the time they were together. And then they go home and get ready and, and go to work. So I think that there probably are more people. The, you're right. These are only the censors. And I've also, I, I want to just say this, Teresa, you know, we've had people, young people have asked me in the audiences, if this is so effective, why isn't the world in a different place? And, you know, it's a good question. I understand that. What we have found is that it is the ability for some group, some individual somewhere in the world to constantly be feeding the field that takes a lot of the rough edges is the way we sometimes think of it off of, of the big change we're seeing in the world. It is because there is so much love, so much coherence being fed into the field that things are not what they, you know, we know they could be much worse. And it is this coherence, I think, that offers a very powerful balancing force. Uh, it, it's not designed to impose change. It's designed to create the coherence in the field within that coherence that supports cooperation, that supports the communication. And we're seeing it uh, very effectively. And now that the tools are helping us to validate what it is that we have sensed is, is happening in the field. So that's part of what this is. Thank you for sharing that, Teresa. That's awesome. Yeah. And more, more and more, uh, Claudia and Roland will share with us on the March event with the Tree Project and with so, some of the other initiatives uh, that Global Coherence Initiative are doing. We'll be able to actually get more feedback on how mm -hmm. we're doing. And this is one of the quotes that really um, has inspired both Claudia and I and, and really ignited the Global Coherence Pulse and so much of what we're doing. And it really just take small islands of coherence. As you said, like the more of us that actually choose this, not just on the third um, Saturday of every month, but every day, just stop when we think about it and pulse the planet with love, that that's what the planet needs from us more than ever before. And in addition, Greg, this is the first time that we're letting people know about this, but in addition to the Global Coherence Pulse, uh, our team over at Live It Now Productions have created the Islands of Coherence, which is a new heart-centered social network, right? And it's a place where we can choose what we have in our activity feed. We can gather together as a community and, and practice coherence, share with each other, find purpose and partners, and really create a place where we can learn what it means to be an embodied Islands of Coherence together. And uh, we are going to have a launch party next Saturday. Oh, we're going to have a launch party next Saturday. So we hope everybody that's on the line today come and join us at this launch party. And you will be the first to be able to enter into this beautiful social network where we can practice and we can stabilize and we can pulse the planet together every day. So I'm really, really excited about this. Wow, Teresa, I, I, you're right. I didn't know about that. I want to thank you. Just thank you and your team for everything that you're doing. I want our viewers to know that a lot of work goes into something like this, and there's a whole team behind the scenes that you cannot see. So I just want to give a shout out, special thanks. Ian, brother, thank you for the beautiful job that you did to help us to be at our best and everyone else. Teresa, everyone, your team working behind the scenes. Uh, and I want to thank everyone again for sharing a part of your day, your afternoon, your evening with us. And um, we look forward to our next. Teresa, I'm going to see you in a few hours tonight. Yeah, for, uh, thank you so much, Greg. I look forward to seeing you. Thank you, everyone, for joining the Pulse today. Really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to join together and add your heart to pulsing the planet with our love and our care and our compassion. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you all. Thank you. Have a bye, beautiful Claudia. Day. Thank you so much. I see your face now. Bye bye. Bye, Greg. Thank you. Right. Let's get bye, Claudia on there. Right here we go. Thanks, Teresa. Yeah. Thank you, Claudia. It's always beautiful to see you. Likewise. Bye, everybody. Blessings, Blessings bye -bye. everyone. Blessings.